Welcome back to the foundry and the fourth installment of the F-150 project. So I just changed the engine oil and filter on this truck and I actually I meant to wash this engine bay when I washed the truck and I just kind of forgot but uh, I went back with uh, Motocraft uh, 520. It's what's been in this truck since it was brand new. I figured if it was good enough for Henry Ford to put in it, <laughs> it's good enough for me. Is it the best? Uh, no, probably not. Uh, is it good enough? I think so. Um, I'm not real picky on oil. I, I'm, I'm more of a, I get in a routine. I, I'm a creature of habit, I guess. So this is what came in it, and that's just what I've always put in it. Uh, now it's a blend oil, synthetic blend. And uh, I think we all know that's kind of a scam. Um, it, it, I don't know what the proportion of synthetic versus mineral base is in the thing. It, it could be like 5% synthetic. I mean, who knows? But um, the blend thing, I read that it was one of the most successful marketing campaigns in the lubrication industry. And um, one of my day jobs is I'm a long-term contractor, lubrication contractor for a refining group that owns Royal Purple. And so occasionally I meet with uh, Royal Purple engineers uh, about refinery business. And, uh, but you know, we talk a lot about different things and. And he said, oh, yeah, the, the whole blend thing's a scam. And he had charts and graphs, and he really broke it down to the molecular level of the oil and showed, you know, he, he talked about things that supported that it was a scam. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't really know. Um, but it's been good enough, so that's what I've always run. So I got uh, Motocraft oil, Motocraft filter, uh, checked all my other fluids and now I'm going to go ahead and service the transmission now, This truck's got a five-speed in it and it's got hundred and thirty thousand miles on it And I think I have changed the transmission fluid in it Probably two or three times at least two maybe three so it's due and uh, So I'm fixing to crawl under there and do that and show you what I'm going going with there um it, it was due a engine oil change. I hadn't changed the, yeah, I'm one of them that it, it's more important how often you change the oil than it is what kind of oil you run. As long as the oil meets the factory specifications, same thing on the filter. Doesn't really matter that much. Yes, there's good filters and, and not so good filters, but if you're changing them routinely, uh, it's good enough in my opinion. Now, having said that, I haven't changed the oil in this truck in over two years. <laughs> But in my defense, I don't think I've put 2,000 miles on it over the course of the last two years. So it's not like the oil was dirty. But, you know, condensation will, will accumulate in there. Um, filter elements break down over time. And so, you know, I, my general policy on these trucks that I don't drive all that much, I change the oil in it once a year, whether it needs it or not. So let's roll under here and see what we're working with. Uh, let me grab a light so you can see there's a drain it even says it right there on the case easy to get to and there's the fill so this is a really easy straightforward job definitely easier than a uh, automatic hardest part is filling it so because you can't get anything you know there's no chance of using a funnel or anything like that because it's on the side and you got limited space here so there's a fix for that, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. Picked up one of these little hand pumps from the parts store. Screws on quartz and uh, gallon jugs. Not the big wide mouth gallon jugs, but like a regular gallon jug. So uh, and it's got a tube, the pickup tube. It's got two different ones. It's got a long one for your gallon jugs, and it's got a shorter one for your quartz. So I, I can easily just put this up there, slip that tube in and pump it. Just take a few minutes. I'm um, going with Merc 5. It's just kind of what they had. I mean, it calls for just Merc on, but they don't, they don't make that anymore. So supposedly uh, Merc 5 is compatible with any, any, you know, Merc 3, Merc, standard Merc. I think I got Merc 3 and it seemed like last time I did it, that's what I used. 
Uh, and I also put a quart of Lucas transmission additive in it before. I, uh, the transmission shifts fine. Um, there's no noise. It just, every once in a while, it'll, it'll make a chirping sound between second and third after it's up to operating temperature, you go to shift it. It's probably synchronizer. Um, it's not terrible. Uh, Merc 5 is a little better than Merc 3. So I'm not even doing an additive uh, with, with this change. And uh, we'll see how it does. But, and if you wanted to use a, a clean gallon jug, uh, these are the type I use. That pump will screw right in the top of that with a longer pickup tube. And uh, so that would be handy too. I don't think the thing holds a full gallon. So on a, on a regular change anyway. So I'm going to feed out of the quarts. I just got three quarts. And uh, I got conflicting information on how much the thing holds. So uh, I'm going to start with three and I'll top it off if I need to. So the drain plug does have some metallic debris on it. It's not excessive, uh, consider the amount of miles that's on the truck. Um, now one thing I just remembered, see this fluid looks brand new. <laughs> and I would say within the last 5,000 miles or so, uh, I put a clutch in that truck. It's a long story, it didn't need a clutch, it needed a uh, slave cylinder. So I just figured, you know, while I'm in there, I'll, I'll, I'll put the clutch in. Actually, uh, my buddy shop did the work. And uh, I don't know what kind of fluid they went back with, whether it just be like standard ATF or whatever. So, I mean, we're only talking about a few quarts. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Freshen it up, and I know exactly what's in it. You're probably wondering, now how could he forget he put a clutch in the thing less than 5,000 miles ago? Well, you got to think that was four or five years ago and I own multiple trucks and work on them all the time. So I just didn't remember that. Uh, well, uh, also they didn't indicate whether or not they even changed the fluid. I just assumed, uh, I know they had to have topped it off because when I was over there looking at it, when it was pulled out, a good bit of fluid had leaked out of the tail shaft housing. So I just assumed they changed it and they probably did because the fluid looked good. But this little pump is very handy and uh, you know it, it takes a little time but it's not overly taxing on my hand so this is light years ahead of ways I've done it before I had to get real creative back in the day I didn't know they made such a thing you know that, that screwed on a bottle this was years ago you know the last time I serviced it so so this is great <laughs> why don't we pull something with this little truck I hadn't done that in a long time. I got this, uh, this is a trailer I make deliveries with a lot. And uh, I'm gonna put about 1,500 pounds on it. And we'll see how the old girl handles it. It'll do just fine. I mean, it, the weight doesn't really amount to nothing. And uh, I like actually pulling with this truck. You know, the small, small loads. It's got a brake controller. This truck didn't have a factory tow package. So I had to wire all that in from, from scratch. 20 years ago and uh, it's actually uh, more responsive and it's not even an expensive controller but man it works good it works better than the one in that Dodge and uh, so let's see how it does and it's so short and maneuverable I can back up to any trailer first stab with no cameras or none of that mess and uh, I can back this trailer into figure eights all day long the truck's so short it's just super easy to tow with it all right this one's a thousand pounds and that one's 500 let's see how she does this thing's just cadillacking uh, <laughs> yeah, i forgot how smooth this truck drove when it's pulling heck i mean from now on if it's less than 5,000 pounds i'll probably just start using this truck it's uh pretty convenient well, they didn't tell me they wanted me to take back a bunch of stuff, so yeah, that whole 5,000 pound thing's out the freaking window. We're fixing to see how this little truck does when it's overloaded. She's loaded. Them trailer tires don't want no more, and I've got the, the air pretty much maxed out in them. Uh, got, they got stuff kind of setting back to where the bumper of the truck's not on the ground. Uh, I've only got to go like two miles. It's a good thing because I don't have any straps. I just got the one 
that I brought over with that stuff. But uh, it's heavy enough, it ain't gonna slide around, I don't think. I'll go easy. Them tires are old and dry rotted too. I wish they would communicate a little better. Well, the truck handles it fine. I wish I had straps. The trailer's slightly overloaded. It's good for about 6,000, 6,500 pounds, something like that. I think I got over seven on it. But uh, I got my brake controller maxed out, so it stops good. But uh, I gotta take these curves really slow so that my pallets don't slide off into the road. And uh, you know, they weigh 1,500 pounds a piece. So it's not like I can do anything with them if they fall off the trailer. So uh, there's no, no more heavy curves until I get back to pull into the foundry. So I'm just going to ease right along and folks are just, folks are just going to have to wait. That's all I can tell them. Well, it was Uber sketch, but we made it. It's a good old truck. Yeah, I think I've overloaded the trailer by about 2,000 pounds after I calculated it. Um, them tires aren't rated for that. They're almost maxed out in air, and you see how they're squatting. I got to get some decent tires on this thing. It's been, it's been on the agenda, just hadn't gotten around to it yet. Got my skids unloaded and put away, so this will wrap up part four of my little F-150 project. Now, in the fifth and final installment of the F-150 series, I'm going to tackle the instrument cluster. Now I don't know exactly when that's going to be because I'm starting to use the truck again and I know if I have to pull that thing out and send it off I can expect about a three week downtime. So I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen. It will happen and when it does you'll be the first to know about it because I'm going to post it right here. So in the meantime there's plenty of other projects we can do. That'll be fun and I will see you guys in the next one.